Hello and welcome to the 120th U.S. Open at Wing Foot Golf Club. Nearly 100 years old, this clubhouse has been host to the biggest names in golf since it opened in 1923. You can practically feel the history in the halls of this storied clubhouse. For every champion who's clinched a win, there are dozens of others who've taken on winged foot challenges and walked away empty-handed. It all started in 1929, the first of five previous U.S. Opens to be played at Wingfoot. That's the year Bob Jones took the trophy after forcing a playoff at the 18th hole. And in 1959, Billy Casper took the championship after committing to an unorthodox approach on the par 3 third hole. More on that in a moment. 1974, arguably the hardest U.S. Open ever played. Champion Hale Irwin survived what was called the Massacre at Wing Foot. He finished at seven over par, if that tells you anything. In 1984, Fuzzy Zeller set a record for the lowest round ever in a U.S. Open playoff, shooting a 67, eight strokes ahead of Greg Norman, who waved a white towel in defeat. And of course, who can forget Jeff Ogilvie's gutsy performance in 2006 with a chip in on 17 during the final round? That was the year that Phil Mickelson, Colin Montgomery, and Jim Furyk came to the 18th with a chance to win, but couldn't par the final hole. Ogilvy watched from this very locker room. Winged foot. What an amazing course with such a rich history of battle-tested champions and agonizing defeats. Let's get out there and take a closer look at some of the moments that have made it so special. It all starts right here on the first hole. You can really get a sense of how this course is going to play with this hole, one of the toughest opening holes in golf. That's right, this hole really sets the stage for the challenges that follow. This is a dogleg left par four that plays slightly uphill. Your approach to the green is critical on this hole. Fuzzy Zeller played it perfectly in 1984, even though his first shot found the rough to the right of the fairway found not a bad lie. Opening hole, par four. Fuzzy ended up playing this tough hole three under for the championship. The trick is mastering the treacherous green, which is severely sloped from back to front and has a number of spines running through it. What a way to start. Jack Nicholas had the opposite experience in 1974. I'm sure he still has nightmares about that opening day when he hit his approach shot above the hole and four-putted the green. You know it's tough when a four-time U.S. Open champion starts off like that. On to hole number three, where in 1959, champion Billy Casper adopted a strategy for playing this par three that's still part of Wingfoot lore. It's Bill Casper of Apple Valley, California. Casper hatched his plan after a practice round when he went for the green and made double bogey. During the championship, he laid up short all four days. And it worked, didn't it? He ended up parring this hole every time, winning the championship by two strokes. Bill Casper is the new Open champ, winner of $12,000, the biggest cash prize ever in the Open. On to hole 17, the site of so many moments that have been critical to the outcome of the U.S. Open. In 1974, it appeared that the title was slipping away from Hale Irwin after back-to-back -back bogeys on 15 and 16, but he sank a crucial 12-foot putt here on 17 to maintain his one-stroke well, lead. What a and, what a and in 2006, Colin Montgomery made things very interesting on this hole after draining a monster 50-foot putt with six feet of break to tie for the lead with Phil Mickelson. But the drama was just getting started that year. Jeff Ogilvie's chip in from the left collar would prove to be the most important shot of the entire championship. The line's good, the line's good. Because who can forget what happened next? It was certainly one of the most dramatic finishes in golf history. Let's go to 18 and check it out. If there's anyone who would like to forget this hole, it's Phil Mickelson who came to the tee with a one-stroke lead. He needed a par to win or a bogey to force a playoff. The ideal position is in the right center of the fairway, but Mickelson's tee shot was so far left, it actually hit a hospitality tent. And his second shot 
hit a tree. And the third plugged in the bunker left of the green. And what a green it is. No stranger to dramatic finishes. In 1929, Bob Jones forced a playoff with a sharply breaking 12-footer for par. He went on to win the 36-hole playoff by an astounding 23 strokes. In 1984, Greg Norman also sank a heroic putt to force a playoff. But he didn't fare as well as Jones, finishing runner-up to Fuzzy Zeller the following day. But there were no heroics in 2006. Both Montgomery and Mickelson double bogeyed the closing hole, handing the title to Ogilvy. What a storied hole. And what an amazing course, proving you can never know what might happen here. The 120th US Open at Wingfoot Golf Club, where history lives.